almost unprecedented levels of acute food insecurity, hunger, and near famine-like conditions in Gaza. It's really an unprecedented situation. We have categories for how we measure acute food insecurity, the IPC phase classifications. And in IPC 3, 4, and 5, which takes us from emergency to crisis to catastrophe, all 2.2 million people in Gaza are in those categories. We've never seen that before. Sadly, it's difficult for us to be on the front line to provide really any kind of agricultural production support because candidly, most of it has likely been very significantly damaged if not destroyed. Prior to the conflict, uh, the people of Gaza had a very self-sustaining fruit and vegetable production sector, very much populated with greenhouses. There was a very very uh, robust livestock, backyard, small-scale livestock production sector. Um, we're recognizing from our damage assessments that the majority of these animal inventories, but also the infrastructure that is needed for that kind of specialty crop production is virtually completely destroyed. <music> estimate that there's about $40 billion worth of damage to the Ukrainian agricultural system uh, infrastructure. Uh, and that comes in the shape of so many different damages. That's damage to infrastructure like grain silos, uh, laboratories, uh, ports. Uh, it's damage to farms themselves, uh, whether it's um, contamination uh, and destruction of land, uh, destruction of livestock, uh, damaged equipment, whether that's tractors or other kinds of machinery that's so critically needed. And obviously, we also saw so many of the farmers themselves actually move into military service. The priority for this year is really working to demine agricultural farmland. And so FAO is working alongside WFP and another NGO that is expert in the field of demining um, because what we're finding is that a very large proportion of the agricultural lands, the farmland, actually has IED or other kinds of devices that have been either intentionally or are just left there because of um, the military uh, activity. watching very closely the coming El Nino pattern. And oftentimes with an El Nino, we see and experience uh, a very protracted or prolonged uh, period of drought or dryness, reduced amounts of rainfall. Um, and that's especially the case as we're moving into this particular year in the Latin America region, specifically what we call the dry corridor. This is really important um, for us to focus on because this is where a very important aspect of agricultural support comes in the space of being able to provide anticipatory action support. So predict and understand either a drought situation or extended periods of rainfall to be able to help farmers better plan for water storage, water harvesting, water management. Um, we can help them in identifying ways that they can be better prepared uh, in terms of planting their crops or taking care of their livestock. The dry corridor is really important to us because what we're seeing there is a very concerning amount of migration. Afghanistan is now FAO's single largest country program. We have over 400 colleagues who are there. Um, we are in every one of the 34 provinces in the country. And the work that we are doing is really making a difference. We are seeing finally a reversal, a return to the positive trends of reduced numbers of people who are in these food insecure situations. It doesn't mean that the problem is solved, but 
the work that FAO has been doing there with other partners to reach somewhere on the order of seven or eight million farmers last year with a goal to reach 10 million in this coming year with winter wheat seed, with animal vaccines, these types of agricultural production saving inputs that are so needed is making a difference. Conflicts go on for years. Uh, climate crises, climate uh, issues become protracted. Eight-year, 10-year droughts, floods that continue to come. So we have to carefully, all of us, find new ways to think about the right balance, the right approach, including support for farmers, support for pastoralists, support for fishermen and women into these responses because agriculture is what can be, I think, a part of the longer term solution to not only working on hunger related issues, but as we know, ultimately gets to the place where you're really trying to build resilience back into the economies, into the lives, into the circumstances that are a result of all of these very difficult situations. Thank you.